Hi there. Well, I bought a new tool for the workshop, so let's check it out. Hi there. I'm Paul. Welcome to my messy workshop. I needed another router for my workshop, mainly because I wanted a plunge router. The only plunge router I have is in my router table. And it's a three and a quarter horse Hitachi M12V router. I really like it. It's a, it's a great router, plenty of power. The only thing is to use it out of the router table, it's a real beast. It's a, it's a big router and it's really more than I need for hand routing. Well, I was at the local green colored big box store the other day and they had the Hitachi KM12VC combo router set on sale. Since I've had such good luck with a Hitachi router that I have on my router table, I thought I'd give it a try. The price was right and like I say, I needed a, a uh, plunge router for the shop. This is a plunge router and a fixed base router kit. And this is the first time opening it. So I thought I'd do a little opening review and we'll just see what this router is all about. Well, the first thing I notice about this router is it comes in a big plastic box. I don't know about you, but I am not a big fan of these big plastic boxes. Um, part of the reason is they take up a lot of room. I seldom put the tools back in them, and I'm just not a big fan of them. But it comes with it, so there you go. Right away, when I open it up, here's the router. And it is a, this is the, the base, the, the, the non-plunge base, the fixed base. Looks nice. On the bottom of it, I notice right away, that there's an adapter ring that is on the router base to take the Porter cable style inserts. I wish it was part of the plastic base. I'm not a real fan of these, but they work good. Uh, I have a similar thing on my uh, uh, Hitachi that's in my, in my uh, router table. So, I mean, it works good. It's just, I wish it was all plastic, but this is fine. It comes with an extra router base with a flat side uh, and a big hole. There's no uh, adapters for that. This is a, uh, it's a two and a half horsepower router. So it should have plenty of power. It's also variable speed and soft start. Those are all features that I like in a router. Here's the, this is the plunge base. Seems like it needs a little lubrication to or there, after using it a couple times, it frees up a little bit. It's got pretty strong springs in it. Of course, once you get the router in it, it adds a little weight to it and it's a little easier to use. The base of the, of the plunge base doesn't have that insert that comes with the fixed base, but it's only held on with two screws and so you can take it off the fixed base and put it on the plunge base. Uh, that will work fine. It would have been nicer if they'd have supplied two, but it'll work just fine transferring it from one to the other. The 
We've got a bag here that has wrenches in it. There's a, a collet centering guide, which is great. A couple screws. I'll have to look in the instructions and see what those are for. Here is a quarter inch collet. There's a half inch collet already in the, the router. Allen wrench. And two wrenches for a 16 millimeter and a 23 millimeter wrench. That's for tightening up the collet it does not have a collet lock on it. So it takes two wrenches to tighten up the collet. That's no big thing. No big deal. There's another bag here. Oh, and here's another wrench that was in a little container up here in the lid. Here's a bag full of Porter Cable style inserts, guides. And they look to be well made. Oh, and it tells the size right on them. I really like that. This is a half inch, a three eighths, a five eighths, a three quarter, a fifty one sixty fourths, a five sixteenths, and a seven sixteenths. I really like the fact that they put on there what size they are. And they thread up real nice. Let's see, just for the heck of it. Well, they fit nice and tight in that adapter, so there's no slop to them. I really, that's a nice feature. Sometimes these, when you put the Porter cable adapters in there, there's a little play, but not in this. It's nice and tight. First impression, looks like a nice router. It, uh, the fit and finish looks nice. There's a, to release it from the router, you just loosen the, just loosen it from the, the, the latch on the thing, and the router part pulls right out to put it back in. You just put it in and align it and tighten it up. The adjustment ring, there's an adjustment ring on the fixed base to adjust the height of the router. Really nice. On the, on the plunge base, there's the release and you just put the router motor down in there, tighten it back up. There is a three position turret for adjusting the, the depth. Two of them are adjustable, one is not. And the adjustment rod to lower it is right here. And that adjusts it to the height of the turret. And then when you plunge, it'll stop there. Really nice. There's a fine adjustment knob on the top. So far this looks pretty nice. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a quick glance at the instructions, even though that's against most woodworkers' policies. I'm going to take a quick look at the instructions. I'm going to put the motor into the plunge base. I'm going to get out a piece of wood and we'll see how it works. Uh, I'll be back in just a little bit. Well, I've put the motor into the plunge base. I found a couple design flaws that I really, really 
don't like. And right now I'm in the process of deciding if I want to return this, get my money back and go to another kind. Let me show you what the problems are. The first problem is this little plastic, let me zoom in a little bit so you can see a little better. The first problem is this plastic sawdust shield. When you plunge the router down, you can hear that. That is the housing hitting that shield and it moves it out of the way. I tried loosening these two screws down here that hold it in place to see if I could move it out, but I can't. It's fixed there. Uh, I could probably take a file and make the holes bigger, maybe, and be able to move it out of the way enough. I'm not sure, but that isn't the best setup. Uh, it looks like when they made it, this bend in the plastic should have been a little more so that was tipped out a little bit so that it didn't hit this housing. The other thing that the, the pro, in fact, the main problem, I'm gonna take it back, is it goes down nice and smooth. It does not come up nice and smooth. It catches and then it releases. Wherever it's at, it catches and then it pops up. It, it's not a smooth action at all. Well, I got looking and this is a fine adjustment knob right here. And there, this is on a threaded rod. And that threaded rod is offset in the steel housing or aluminum housing below it. If you hold that over, then the action is nice and smooth. It just goes up nice and smooth. But if you let go of it, that, steel, that rod goes over against that aluminum housing and it catches every place that it's at. Let me see if I can, there, it's caught right there. And then it snaps out. Um, that does not do anything to help get a nice cut on a piece of wood. There's probably an eighth of an inch play down, or a sixteenth of an inch play down in here. And it's, it's like the rod is in there this way. It's not in there straight. It looks like it's in there this way. So that's a real problem. Uh, another thing that's different, it's not a problem, but I notice that it's different on this saw, or on this saw, on this router, is the release handle. That thing is locked. You can't push it up and down to release the handle. Then it goes up and down. And then as soon as you let go of the handle, it stays there. That's different than the way it is on my other Hitachi. My other Hitachi is free, and then when you get to where you want it, you lock it in place. I think I like that better. Now see that, I've got that plunged a little bit, and there, it, that thing will, and I've got it held, and unless it's in the perfect position, it just latches and it won't come up. It just stays there. So I hate to say that that's a problem, but it's a problem. This may be very well going back to the green big box store for a refund and I'll have to try something else. But that's my only complaint about this router. I mean, it, it looks nice. It, uh, it's a big enough motor, so it should have plenty of power. It goes in and out of the housings easy. Uh, I like everything about it except the plunge. The plunge is, uh, is not real nice. Well, I've made my decision. I'm going to return this router to the big box store, get my money back, and I'm going to shop for a different brand. Uh, I'm really disappointed in this Hitachi router compared to my other Hitachi. Uh, it's like night and day. So, uh, this has been a review and an unboxing of the Hitachi uh, KM12VC. Well, thanks for watching. 
I appreciate your tuning in. Uh, I hope this was of some help to you. Maybe you want to steer clear of this particular router. I don't know. Uh, maybe it's just a fluke. I don't know. I'm not going to uh, get another one. I'm going to go to another brand. So again, thanks for watching. Bye for now.